Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It is good to be back. Um, Texas Box, uh, quick hits comes at you every day, uh, eight to ten minutes a day, keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news uh, and rumors. Um, fun show today. We're going to get into one of the my favorite underdogs in the sport, Luis Alberto Lopez, uh, who just signed with uh, Top Rank. Um, he's going to be uh, fighting Kiko Martinez at some point. He's the mandatory for Kiko Martinez's IBF belt. Um, so it's hard to believe that Kiko Martinez is uh, a world champion again at this stage of his career. It's even more probable he's going to fight Luis Alberto Lopez um, for that world title as a mandatory challenger. And he's earned it. Um, but, guys, before we get into all that, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, text, uh, Like I said, quick hits comes at you every day. Twice a day, eight to ten minutes a day. Um, also, please subscribe to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds go to autism research and recovery. Um, so it's near and dear to our heart. That's Texas Boxing Scene, completely dedicated to Texas Boxing. All proceeds go to autism research and recovery. A lot of good content on that channel. I added from uh, San Antonio for uh, this past weekend. Um, all right, let's get back into Luis Alberto Lopez because uh, this guy. Burst onto the scene in 2019. Uh, a Roy Jones card that was televised on uh, you know, the fight pass. He, he beat Ray Jimenez. Uh, the style cut, I believe, after round seven. Uh, Jimenez had a horrible cut. He, you know, Jimenez was a really good prospect. A lot of people thought beat Chris Diaz, a really touted guy. Uh, Luis Alberto Lopez got through him, beat him, you know, outboxed him for a while, which was weird, really took Jimenez out of his game plan, which uh, we wrote off the, okay, well, maybe Jimenez wasn't as good as we thought, and Jimenez hasn't fought in almost three years since. Um, then he, after that, he got, he got a fight with Ruben Villa. Lost very closely to Ruben Villa. Um, after that, he, he beat uh, undefeated Mexican fighter Christian Baez, stopped him in five. Uh, then he beat Andy Vences. Then he beat Gabe Flores. Now he beat Isaac Lowe. And now he's the mandatory for the IBF. I mean, he wasn't supposed to win any of these fights. He wasn't supposed to beat Ray Jimenez. He wasn't supposed to beat Ruben Villa. He wasn't supposed to beat Baez. He wasn't supposed to beat um, Gabe Flores for sure, who he went up to 130 to beat and beat him up, beat the snot out of him. Um, he wasn't supposed to beat Isaac Lowe either. He wasn't supposed to beat any of these guys. And he's just beating all of them except for being he lost close to. Uh, but that was, you know, that that was a, a, a win at the time because he showed that he belonged at that level. And then what he's done since is, is astonishing. Um, you know, I, 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 if I had to pick right now, I think he beats up um, uh, uh, Kiko Martinez and becomes world champion. I really do. Yeah, you know, I, I remember uh, when he fought Ray Jimenez, he fought him in Tacoma, Washington. Uh, not Tacoma, Washington. Yakima, Washington, I think it was called. Some, some, some random place like that in this little casino. Um, and I was at the way, and they had, you know, they, they waited in the morning and had a ceremonial way, and then I'm sitting there. And, uh, you know, Guy Taylor, who's the matchmaker for uh, Roy Jones, sees uh, Luis Alberto Lopez get on the scale. He's like, that's a huge 126 pounder. And I think at that point, he realized that his guy, who they say, you know, their fighter, Ray Jimenez, was going to be in a little bit of trouble. He, he, he was going to be in a little bit of trouble. Um, and, and, I mean, to think that he's going to go from that to fighting for a world title and a fight that I think he can win and be a world champion is it, really astonishing. They, they took him into they thought he could give him and his rounds and, 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 and make, like, difficult for him and, and, and really challenge him. And now he's at the highest level. Uh, I, you know, I, I think he's a top 10 featherweight as is, you know, right now. I think he's got the resume to support that. And I, I think he beats Kiko Martinez. And this is really a rags to riches story. Um this is, you know, I don't think, you know, and I said when he beat, when he fought Flores back over the summer, stop putting this guy in with your prospects. He's going to beat Flores. And he beat Flores. I beat him up bad. 
Like, bad. Like, that's a major step back for Flores. Or whatever you thought of Flores coming into the fight, lose a guy, to, lose two guys smaller than you. You know, a weight class smaller than you. Um, you know, and Alberto Lopez is a guy that really, really takes takes advantage of your mistakes, right? Um, if you get lazy, if you drop your hands, he makes you pay. Uh, if you lunge, he makes you pay. He takes full advantage of your mistakes. Um, he, he puts on relentless pressure. He keeps coming at you. you know, he comes with his hands down and hits, throws punches from these awkward angles. Like, I, I, to me, he's like a mini Carl Frotch, right? Like, there's a lot of Carl, He's got good power, really good power. He's got a good chin. Uh, and he throws punches from weird angles, right? Like, it doesn't really look orthodox. But I, I think, like, subtly he's doing a lot of things really good that you might not be noticing because he is awkward. Like, he's unorthodox. Like, it looks like he doesn't know what he's doing. Um, you know, I was a big Frotch fan, and I'm a big fan of this guy for a lot of the same reasons. Like, I think he's, you know, he, he, what he's doing is he, he, subtly really, really good. Um, and I, I think this guy is going to be a problem. Um, I, Louis Alberto Lopez is going to be a problem for everyone at the featherweight division. Not that he's going to beat everyone, uh, but he can certainly, certainly make a run. And he's in the right hands with with, 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 with top rank, right? Um, if he does get past Kiko Martinez, I mean, really, he's going to start getting big money fights. I mean, that's a world title fight. So, uh, but you know. If you look at the, at the landscape, you got Navarrete, right? You got Vargas. You got guys like Lee Wood, Isaac Dogbe, Josh Warrington, Kiko Martinez, Kid Galahad, um, Joette Gonzalez. Um, you're going to have Brandon Figueroa there. All of these are fun fights. You know, I'm not saying he wins. My guy, Jason Dickens. Um, I'm not saying he wins all these fights, but these are really, really entertaining fights. You know, if, if, if I could put him in with... Mauricio Laura next, something like that. Like, he's going to be in good fights with everyone. Uh, the featherweight division is a lot of fun right now. Um, it, it, it's loaded with, with guys like this. Um, so, like I said, he's going to fight Kiko Martinez. Um, I, I think he might stop Kiko Martinez. You know, not to disrespect Kiko Martinez. Uh, but it's it's just gonna be fun. I think they're gonna. I think if he does beat him, I I think they're gonna put him in with Mike Conlon to try to get Conlon about, and that's not gonna work because Conlon's not beating this guy. Uh, but he's in he's in the right hands with top rank. You know, if you watch that Isaac Low fight, he scores a left hook. The first punch of the fight knocks him down. First punch of the fight knocks Isaac Low knocks him down again in the second round. I mean, he he's got power. He throws punches from weird angles, and he just hits you. He just hits you, and he bullies you around the ring. And like I said, his boxing skills are unorthodox. They're a little weird, but they're pretty good. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Uh, leave your thoughts, comments below. Um, you guys excited to see Luis uh, Alberto Lopez fight for a world title? I mean, I, I can't believe we got to this point. Uh, please leave your thoughts, comments below. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe uh, to 3D Boxing as well as the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene, where all proceeds go to autism research and recovery. Uh, it is December 24th. It's Christmas Eve, 2021, um, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.